Hello, my dear students. I hope you all are doing good, even in such a tough situation. So I bring you here, the classroom back to you. And today we're going to discuss the third chapter, that is rotation and revolution. This is one of the very important chapter in understanding as because it helps us in understanding the movement of the earth, our planet where we survive. The earth is the only planet where life exists and this planet itself is dynamic, it moves. So the movement of the earth that it carries out with is rotation and revolution. So we'll first discuss about rotation in this section. So then what is rotation? Rotation is the spinning of the earth on its axis from west to east once in 24 hours and it causes day and night. This is one of its most prominent effect that we get to see that the days and nights as it is formed every 24 hours that is because of rotation of the earth. Now the rotation of the earth takes place on its axis. So what is an axis? We see axis is an imaginary line that runs through the globe and joins the two poles that is the north pole and the south pole. And the axis is not a straight line, it is not mounted straight at 90 degrees. Rather it is inclined at 66 and half degree to its orbital plane and 23 and half degree to its vertical plane. So when we see this 66 and half degree and the axis, you see, this is considered to be a globe. The circle that I've drawn is considered to be a globe. The line that runs here, a diagonal line is a line of axis, or this is an imaginary line. We call it imaginary because in its true sense, we do not see such lines on the earth's surface. It is only made on the globes. So hence we call it an imaginary line. So this line is an axial line or the line of axis which joins the two poles that is north and south. And on this axis the earth rotates from west to east. Now this axis if you see the orbital plane is a plane formed by the orbit or it is a plane formed in between the orbital lines of the earth. So here when you see the angle formed at the orbital line is 66 and half degree while to its vertical plane the angle formed is 23 and half degree. Now as we discussed that rotation causes day and night. You see in this globe one portion is unshaded while the other is shaded. So now let us consider the shaded portion as night and the unshaded portion as the day half. So what we see is now this day and night is separated by this imaginary line and to this line that separates the day and the night is we call circle of illumination. So hence to define it we say it's an imaginary line that separates the daylit half and the dark half on the globe and it is also known as the shadow circle as this daylight portion is the one, the poor part of the earth that faces the sun, experiences the daylight while on the other side is the shadowed portion which experiences the night. Now the rotation of the earth as we discussed takes 24 hours which is considered to be one day but in real the time is not exactly 24 hours. It is 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4.09 seconds. So this is the actual time taken by the earth to complete its rotation and to this we call it sidereal day. This rotation of the earth is not the same throughout the globe. It changes with latitude. Higher the latitude, lower is the speed and lower is the latitude, higher is the speed. So that is why we see here for speed of rotation that speed varies. It is not the same throughout like I said. 
so what we see it's much faster at the equator equator zero degree is a lower latitude so the speed is much faster well at the poles which is of the highest latitudinal value 90 degree the speed is slower so this is where we see that the speed varies from lower latitudes to higher latitudes this is because at higher latitudes that is the poles the circumference of the earth is less while at the lower latitudes the circumference is very large so this is where we see larger the circumference greater is the speed now we come to the effect of rotation rotation has large impacts on our lifestyle because it causes day and night and that itself changes a lot in the lifestyle of our hours so this is where we see the rotation of the earth and its first and a major effect is that causes day and night apart from that it also causes variation in temperature because of rotation the amount of insulation received is not the same everywhere the next is occurrence of tide tide is a natural rise and fall of water over the oceans so this is mostly caused because of the earth's gravitational attraction so in fact it's the moon's gravitational attraction as the earth rotates different places experiences tides in different time of the day the last one is the determination of time see as we already said that it causes day and night the effect itself causes day and night that means day is a different time of 24 within that 24 hours daytime and night is a different time interval so that is why it helps us in understanding the time factor now coming to the Coriolis force and its effect the rotation of the earth while it moves it generates a speed the speed results in the deflection of the winds and ocean currents and this was first been discovered in 1835 by a French scientist named Gustave Coriolis. Since then, it came to be known as Coriolis force. It is a force that is generated by the rotational body that results in the deflection of the wind and the ocean current. Now the deflection takes place in the northern hemisphere towards the right while in the southern hemisphere the deflection takes place in the left this was very clearly stated by william ferrell in his ferrell's law stating that owing to the rotation of the earth the winds and the ocean currents deflects towards the right in the northern hemisphere and towards the left in the southern hemisphere so this is what we call Coriolis effect because it is all happening with the force that was generated because of rotational body if you are to take an example you see a fan you put on the fan and then you see as the speed as the fan starts gathering the speed at that point of time you take any object in your hand and hit it on the fan what you will see is the object that you hit on the fan will not come back to you rather will get deflected away from you this is because of the rotational activity and such is all because of the force that it generates and this is what we discuss as Coriolis force and its effect the last one to be discussed in today's topic is centrifugal force now centrifugal force is an outward movement of the force that is again generated by the rotation of the earth this force it leads to the bulging of the equator and as the equator seems to be bulged on top the poles seems to be flattened and this mostly is caused because of the centrifugal force that is generated by the rotation of the earth so this is all about the rotation thank you very much class i hope you all would enjoy learning from it you all stay safe and stay home